Hello everyone, so today we are here and we are doing a rather difficult comparison. We are comparing the Zoom G5N multi effects against the Boss ME80. Now there are a lot of features that overlap each other and also those that do not. And before I go through some of the features which are not the same on each model, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test them in a very real time situation, meaning I'll program it in a way that I would use it live, a very simple way. I'm going to use both these multi effects in the manual mode or stormbox mode. And to keep things even more neutral, I'm going to run both the multi effects into an electro harmonics. 44 Magnum power amp and in turn the power amp will be going into an orange PPC 212 So what I have done here, I have set up six different patches for each of these units So we're going to be comparing each of the amp models which are similar on both the multi effects So we have a simulation of a Marshall type amp, a Mesa type amp, a Bogner amp, Vox, Fender And finally I'm going to test out the acoustic simulator on the multi effects now with each of these patches, I've also assigned an old drive pedal which is similar on both units, mainly the Tube Screamer, a Fuzz pedal, an Octave Fuzz. Besides the OD, I have set a modulation as well, so you're going to be hearing some chorus, some flanger, some phaser, followed by delays, analog, tape, and finally some reverb in the chain. So there is only three reverbs on the Boss ME80 which is Spring, Hall and Room. So I'm going to compare them head to head with the same reverbs that are on the Zoom G5N. So now let's check out some of the higher gain patches. Let's start with the Marshall type amp.
Now before we check out the final amp model which is a fender type amp, I'm going to briefly explain about the cab simulations on each of these units. Now the G5N comes with 5 different cab simulators or emulators or whatever you want to call them and they've made each cab unit to match each of the respective amps that are on the G5N. So you'll have a cab to pair up with the Marshall, to pair up with the Boogie, to pair up with the Bogner, Vox Fender, so on. Now on this demo, I have not turned on the cab sims for the G5N. However, if you choose to, you can actually add the cab sim into the signal chain and from there you can further tweak your tone. You can emulate a mic being placed in front of the cab and also to blend two different mics, a 57 and a 421. Furthermore, you can tweak the highs and lows of that cabinet. So if you're dialing in a tone and you're plugging into a particular cabinet or you're going direct to the front of house and you feel like you can't really fine tweak your tone to what you want it to be, you can just add the cab sims and you're good to go. Now the Boss ME80 does have a cab sim, but there's no way that you can tweak the exact tone of the cab sim. Now in order to access the cab sim, all you have to do is take a dummy adapter, 3.5mm adapter and plug it into the headphone uh, output jack. And the moment you plug it in, it's going to alter the tone and emulate a particular cab. What cab in particular, I did not find out, but it does change the tone. And for this Fender amp comparison on these two units, I had to use the cab sim because for some reason I could not get it to sound right into the setup that I have. So the moment I plugged in the adapter and turned on the cab sim, the tone was much more better.
Now that you heard some of the different tones on these units, let me just briefly talk about what's different on each of these units. One of the major features of the G5N is it allows you to add any effects into any area of your signal chain. Now the Boss ME80 is a fixed signal chain, so you can't do anything about moving the effects around. Whereas the G5N, you can just add and move them left or right wherever you want them in the signal chain. If you want a delay in front of your amp, you can go ahead and move it there or if you want a wah pedal at the end of the signal chain you can do the same thing another thing which i personally like on the g5n is you can save the manual or storm box mode i for one prefer a more traditional approach to these multi effects if i can use them as individual pedals uh, in a signal chain it'd be much more easier for me to tweak around with settings and things like that so what's nice is i can save multiple uh, manual storm box modes into the multi effects. Whereas with the Boss M80, the moment I stomp on the manual mode, there is no way I can save the settings of that manual mode. Now the plus on the G5N, it has a built-in looper and rhythm machine or drum machine. Also there are more drives, reverbs, and higher delay times on the G5N. And the G5N has some interesting drives. It emulates a certain gold overdrive, you know, a clone center. It emulates uh, an EP booster, RC booster, so there's much more options there. Whereas the Boss unit contains a lot of Boss pedals, which is not a bad thing if you really like the tone of the Boss pedals, it's going to be a win-win situation for you. Another thing is the delay times on the G5N is much more higher. For example, if I were to take the tape or analog delay mode, it does not restrict me to 600 milliseconds or 400, it actually gives me up to about 2000 for the tape delay mode. And the Boss tries to keep things a bit more real, like as if you're having an actual uh, tape or analog delay pedal so it's gonna limit the amount of milliseconds or delay time that you can achieve on this multi effects unit another thing about the G5N is it's really about tweaking the knobs and tinkering about the settings because for each individual storm box there's a lot of parameters sometimes to adjust what's nice is especially for the amp modes there's a presence control you can turn the tails of the reverb when it's really on and off also you can add an expression pedal into the G5N so you can assign an additional effect onto that expression pedal. For example, if you wanted a wow one expression pedal and a pitch shifter on the other one, you can do so. Now with all those massive features on the G5N, why would you go for the ME80? Well, for one, the ME80 is a much more stripped down unit, so it's a much more simpler intuitive design for people who do not want to tweak as much, who maybe have not gotten an idea of how to set up a signal chain, how to set up certain effects. So the way the M80 is designed is it's really, really easy to use. In fact, you don't even need to read a manual. So it's all written on the multi effects itself. It's very easy to pick out the effects that you want to use immediately. Even the noise gate is accessible immediately. And it's also much more easier to assign an effect into the expression pedal. Whereas with the G5N, you'd have to add an effect into the signal chain and then you gotta assign it to the pedal, so on and so forth. So the M80 is a much more easier unit to use for those who don't wanna hassle about tweaking their tone so much. So there you go, that's the comparison between the M80 and the G5N. Hopefully this helped make you a decision on which one you wanna buy because they seem to have a very similar pricing, they're not too far off. So give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, subscribe for more content and see you real soon.